for the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God for the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and distressed, depressed and lonely and impatient during the pandemic. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered our world of sickness, suffering, and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory now and forever. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather around the table of the Lord as one community on this fifth Sunday of Lent. 
and we beg for the grace that we may truly appreciate the new life that Jesus offers us, the new life that is being given to us whenever we undergo that conversion that we need as Christians. And so let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. mark iniquities lord who can stand but with you is forgiveness that you may be revered i trust in the lord my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel 
from all their iniquities. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained two days in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found out Lazarus had already, been in a, had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, 
Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews had come to Mary and seen what, ha and seen what he had done, began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Kapag mabalitaan ho natin na yung isang malapit sa atin, yung isang malapit sa buhay natin ay may malubhang sakit na sa bingit ng kamatayan, madalas ang unang naiisip natin gawin ay dalawin yung taong iyon. Lalo na kung matagal na rin natin hindi nakikita yung taong iyon. Iisipin natin na baka ito na yung huling pagkakataon na magkita kami. Kaya kapag narinig natin may malubhang sakit, no? tinitingnan din natin, tinatanong natin, kamusta ba ang lagay niya? At kung hanggat maaari, tatakbo at tatakbo tayo, dadalawin natin yung taong iyon. Kaya kung titingnan ho natin yung reaksyon ni Jesus dun sa ating Ebanghelyo, parang kakaiba yung naging reaksyon niya. Bakit? Kasi hindi siya pumunta agad-agad. Binalita sa kanya na may sakit si Lazaro. Binalita sa kanya na yung itong taong mahal mo may sakit. Pero anong sabi niya? Pumadito muna tayo. Anong sabi ni Jesus? May iwan muna tayo dito. Pagpalipas pa tayo ng araw. The moment that he heard that the one he loves is ill... He remained where he was for two more days. Kung mahal natin yung isang naghihingalo, patatagalin pa ba natin yung pagpunta dun sa tabi niya? Di ba hindi? Pero, katakataka yung ginawa ni Jesus. He delayed his coming. He delayed his visit to this person whom he loves. Why? Because he was so sure that this story will not have a sad ending. He was so sure that Lazarus would be raised from the dead. He was so sure that this will be a sign that would be needed. That's why he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. He was so sure of what will happen. But there is another interesting thing that we also heard from our gospel. If Jesus was so sure of what will going to of what will happen, if Jesus was so, if Jesus was so sure that the illness of Lazarus is necessary for God to be glorified, if Jesus was so sure 
that Lazarus will be raised from the dead, then why did Jesus weep? Bakit umiyak si Jesus? Kung alam natin na happy ending ang kwento, malulungkot pa ba tayo? Kung alam natin na hindi namamatay yung bida sa kwento, may iyak pa ba tayo? Siguro hindi na. Pero kahit naman yung isang malungkot na kwento, yung paborito nating drama na minsan na nating napanood, minsan na nating naiyakan, di ba, kahit pa paano, nakakaiyak pa rin, kahit pa ulit-ulit nating pinapanood. Kahit alam na natin yung mangyayari, kahit alam natin yung ending, pero kapag pinanood pa rin natin yung nakaka- nakakaiyak na eksena, may iyak pa rin tayo. That is also what Jesus felt. He was so sure of the outcome. He was so sure of what will happen. He was so sure that everything will turn out fine. But still, he wept. Still, he cried. Why? Because he still felt the reality of death. He still felt the anguish of death. The death that he will undergo. The death that we will all undergo. And this is precisely the story of this Sunday. It is not just about life. It is also about death. Magkasama ho yan. Hindi sila mapaghihiwalay. We get to appreciate life with the death that comes along with it. When a young person matures, he dies from his childish ways. He is given a new life as a mature person. When two people get married, they die from the life of being single and are reborn to become husband and wife. When a child is born to a woman, that woman dies from the idea of not being a motherhood, of being a mother. Motherhood becomes her new life. At kahit sa pagpanaw ng isang minamahal, ano ho yung sinasabi natin? Nasa mabuti na siyang kalagayan. Nalagay na siya sa tahimik. Tahimik na siya. Nasa maganda na siyang kalagayan. Even the death of a loved one will still point to the beauty of everlasting life. That new life that Jesus has prepared for all of us. But let us also remember, my dear brothers and sisters, that that new life is nonsense without Jesus. Walang saysay yung bagong buhay kung wala si Jesus. Kaya tayo nananalig na may muling pagkabuhay ay dahil kay Jesus. Pero kung yung pagbabagong buhay natin na yon ay hindi dahil kay Jesus, pakitang tao lang yan. It is because of Jesus that we have faith in the resurrection of the dead. But the new life that we achieve every time that we change will be nonsense if it is not rooted in Jesus. Marami na hong pagkakataon na nakakarinig ako ng kwento ng mga nagpapabinyag bilang katoliko. Yung mga na-convert sa, mula sa ibang relihiyon Hindi katoliko, naging katoliko. At sa mga pagkakataong makakakwentuhan ko ang ilan sa kanila, at kapag natanong, natanong ko bakit, bakit sila nagpabinyag, bakit sila, o bakit nila pinili na maging katoliko? They simply say, I have found Jesus in the Catholic faith. Nakakatuwang pakinggan. Lalo na kapag narinig natin yung kanilang pagbabagong buhay dahil naapektuhan sila sa buhay ng isang kapwa katoliko. Pero sa kabilang banda, nakakalungkot din. Hindi ho para sa kanila na umanib sa pagiging katoliko, kundi para sa karamihan sa atin 
na lumaki na sa pagiging katoliko. Nakakalungkot dahil sa panghinayang. Panghinayang dahil sa haba ng panahon ng ating pagiging katoliko. Natagpuan ba talaga natin si Jesus? O baka naman pakitang tao lang din yung pagiging katoliko natin? Death and life will always be a tandem. With death comes new life. But these two will only have meaning in Jesus. If we experience death without Jesus, death in any other form, then it will simply be the end. Tapos na. Tapos na ang lahat kapag wala si Jesus dun sa naranasan nating kamatayan. But death with Jesus means passing over to new life. Alam natin yung kwento ni Lazaro. Alam natin yung ending. At ganun din ho yung buhay natin bilang Kristiyano. Pero kung wala si Jesus sa kwento, hindi rin magiging happy yung ending. Magiging pakitang tao lang din yung buhay natin. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As the time of Christ's suffering and death draws nearer, let us ask the Father to lead us through the dark moments of the Passover of His Son to the glory of His resurrection. For every intention you will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that she may be defended from the snares of her enemies through the Spirit of Christ who makes His home in her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of this world, that they may be gathered into the Father's kingdom through the prayers and sacrifices of Christians in every nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that they may pass peacefully and confidently through the gates of death to meet Him who is the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn that the Christ who wept for Lazarus, his friend, may console them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the Lord may unbind them and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we lift up to the Lord our personal intentions, remembering all the people whom we, whom we promised to pray for. Father, hear the prayers of your church. Bring forth to resurrection the people who trust in your promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalts and praise as we are.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold Jesus, our resurrection in our life. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not, not worthy that you, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Alay Kapwa collection for last Sunday is totaled as as total as 56,708 and 75 centavos. No? Mahita niyo po sa ating mga monitors ang ating pong collection po nung nakaraang Sunday para po sa ating Alay Kapwa collection na siya pong ibinibigay, pinapadala natin sa Caritas Manila at bilang pangayuda para sa ating mga kapatid na nangangailangan kapag sila po'y nasa lanta ng anumang sakuna. Maraming salamat po sa inyong patuloy na pagtulong at magpatuloy pa rin po ang ating Alay Kapwa Collection sa buong linggo ng Kwaresma. And we will now have the Alay Kapwa Collection while we sing our pananagutan. Sa loob po ng dalawang linggo ay ipagdiriwang na po natin ang mga mahal na araw and our complete schedule for the Holy Week, for Masses, Confessions, are now posted in our social media pages. So please follow up. So follow us so you can be updated of our schedules for, our, for the Holy Week celebrations here at the Manila Cathedral. For those who are interested, our souvenir shop is now accepting pre-orders of Palaspas. You may give your orders, your pre-orders, as you exit the cathedral. Maraming salamat po. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.